Hi, my name is Bal Sarma. I'm part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Product Management Team. Welcome to this course on Capacity Planning for Oracle Database on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Platform. Before I proceed, I will take a pause here so that you can go through our safe harbor statement. Objectives for this lesson is to understand various tools available for knowing your database workload behavior. In second module, we will discuss database performance characteristics as well as sizing concepts. And next, we'll focus on how to interpret sizing requirements, mostly from AWR data. And finally, we will discuss about how to validate database migration on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So let's start with the first module here we are going to talk about tools which are available within database system and we will also see how they can help understand database workload behavior the most important step when you are planning to move your database workload to oracle cloud infrastructure is to understand workload characteristics resource requirements performance requirements high availability requirements, as well as service level agreements. System performance affects business goals, so that's the reason we focus on time here. So when we move to a new platform, we look at performance improvement, which is usually meaning doing things faster. All of the performance is only about time. When a user is waiting for completion of a request, ideally he is waiting for waiting on time. So well, so how we can find where system time is spent and we are able to find them or we can think of how to reduce them. So the method is find where system time is spent and then we look at various ways to reduce it. So when it comes to Oracle database, Oracle kernel is instrumented to track database time in every component of database. And when we talk about database time, it ignores the idle wait times. So reducing the database time for the same workload is an indicator of better performance. And if you are familiar with Enterprise Manager or Performance Hub, which is part of uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Databases, so they all talk about database time and that helps you drill down for any kind of analysis. There are different tools like AWR reports, Active Session History reports, ADDM reports, or even SQL Performance uh, Analyzer or SQL Access Advisor, all of these tools are based on database time. So let's take an example here and try to understand what is database time. So in this example, we see there are several user sessions which are connected to Oracle database using some or other activities. The database spends time on various requests, and these could be session connect or executing SQL or fetching results. There are session disconnect kind of activities which is uh, going on within the database. So at any point in time, there could be one or more sessions. So here you see user two. Uh, so basically at this particular time window, I see there are three user sessions connected, user one, two, as well as user n, and doing some of the activity. So the black line here, it shows total wall clock time and the database time is represented in these dotted uh, areas. So they show database time spent in processing the user request. If you use Enterprise Manager, you see Enterprise Manager page uh, shows you colored areas that represents database time and mostly focus on the bigger stuff for performance consideration. So looking at the definition of total database time, it is sum of time spent processing all user requests. It means sum of time running on CPU plus waiting for resources, which are non-idle wait events. And by non-idle wait events, I mean uh, any kind of contentions or latches or logs. So they all contributes to database time. So So DB time per second, that is every active session, is nothing but total database time over wall clock time. 
So every objective session is important. It shows the busyness of your database system. And we are going to use that concepts when we talk about uh, capacity planning. So these concepts are important to understand. Another example here, uh, we are looking at active sessions as well as database time. So active sessions are foreground sessions which are contributing to database time at any given moment. So in this example, there is a user session which is connected and uh, looks like he is uh, going through a web-based uh, uh, e-commerce site and browsing for certain books or after some time he is going through reading the reviews for one of the book then he has spends time in adding it to a cart as well as checkout processes so the green area is representing time spent in database and this black line it shows the total wall clock time and based on this you can calculate the average active activity of the session so that is db time over elapsed time and db time is sum of all of these green areas here so in a database time each sample represents a second of session activity and foreground sessions in a database call either on cpu waiting for io or waiting for any non-idle weights so there is a view v dollar active session history and uh, these this particular view will have a collection of timed regular samples of active sessions attributes so some of the seconds to compute total database time and this is also related with the active session history we are going to cover next so db time is nothing but sum of db time over all the sessions here the next thing we'll discuss about is uh, using awr uh, tool or it's known as automatic workload repository tool so uh, the question is we are concerned about the performance data and where exactly that goes so it goes to awr which is a repository of uh, historical performance data and that includes a kind of cumulative stats for the system sessions individual sequels statements segments as well as services so all of the high load SQL statements, they are also captured as part of performance data and they are stored in AWR repository. It also captures object stats for segments as well as indexes or any other database objects. So it is important as the stats are foundation of performance tuning. By automating the gathering of database stats, uh, this is very common. You can use this data for uh, sizing as well as you can you can also use compare database time between two performance window so you can generate a awr report uh, comparison uh, for two different windows or different kind of workloads and it helps you for faster analysis of system performance so now we are going to take a look at the awr warehouse uh, architecture so most recent awr stats are always stored in system global area and these stats every hour are collected using uh, M1 process. So it, M1 process collects it every hour and uh, creates basically a AWR snapshot. And these snapshots are by default stored under SysOx uh, table space. So as per the AWR retention policy, uh, the older snapshots might get purged. Uh, by internal jobs and you can also control the AWR retention using AWR retention parameters uh, you can also check in your database what kind of snap intervals are configured and what is your AWR uh, retention which is uh, effective in the database using this DBA hist WR control views control table so default behavior of database is to have a days of uh, AWR retention, but uh, changing these values uh, are required and mostly DBS uh, make it to three months or six months based on their uh, AWR retention requirements. So many customers, they offload this performance data to another system, we call it AWR warehouse. So that could be part of your enterprise manager uh, deployment or maybe a separate uh, uh, database instance which hosts AWR warehouse 
and the objective is to have longer term uh, retention of uh, performance data. The second thing is uh, active uh, session history and uh, we generate active session history reports uh, within Oracle database and it is used for transient analysis. So most common use case is like what is happening within last few minutes. Uh, another use case is performing active session history reporting in the past based on uh, different dimensions. It could be SQL ID or module action or sessions. So all the active sessions are captured every second here. Uh, foreground as well as background are sampled. Active foreground contributes to the database time. That is what we discussed uh, in earlier slide. Uh, so several dimensions are captured as part of active session history reports. So it is around SQLs or SQL ID, program, module, actions. And the advantage of uh, capturing data across these dimensions, you have a better uh, anal better analytics can be done uh, or you can view the performance data from various angles. So two things, in-memory buffer is yeah, using the V$ active session history and there the sampling interval is one second and for longer term uh, uh, you have a DBA his active session history table so there the sampling interval is uh, 10 seconds and AWR is also like 10 seconds but uh, uh, the advantage of active session history is like every second we are capturing the performance data uh, and that helps with uh, analytics. So active session history is nothing but a system wide record of database activity and it gives a good idea of uh, what's going on within the database and each rows are going to represent a second of active uh, session time. The next tool is uh, automatic uh, database diagnostic monitor and what it does is like it perform accurate and timely diagnosis of the problem uh, before making any change to a system. So you would be able to diagnose the root cause of performance problems and if the SQL tuning uh, advisor is on or you can get uh, advice from ADDM that which ones are your top SQLs. And uh, what is the potential bottleneck in the system where your focus should be means which uh, SQLs are contributing to most of the database time within the system. So it makes it possible to Oracle database to diagnose its own performance as well as determine how uh, any identified problem can be resolved. You can do root cause analysis or uh, uh, you can look for corrections or recommendations, impact as well as benefit analysis. You can create several ADDM reports for any desired workload during peak hours and also understand the database behavior before migrating to cloud and that could be potentially useful when comparing performance uh, data. So there are several components within automatic uh, uh, database diagnostic monitors. So uh, as I said, uh, it helps you diagnose the persistent performance issues. It uses AWR snapshot for those analysis. So regular intervals, it could be invoked automatically or manually. Uh, you can use compare period ADDM, uh, which provides you in the performance comparison across two time frames. Uh, that also relies on AWR data, it's manual. Uh, there is another thing called as real time ADDM. And using that one, you'd be able to do a hung analysis as well as you can identify extremely uh, slope uh, database you can it is as a normal as well as a diagnostic mode connections and uh, this is also manual in nature means uh, when you need this you need to run it from the enterprise manager uh, interface uh, we also introduce enhanced real-time ADDM so that's automatic uh, it's proactively detects as well as diagnose any transient high impact problems it is built inside the database and automatically runs every three seconds uh, to find uh, any potential database problem and there are several criteria or trigger conditions uh, based on that uh, it gets invoked automatically so it's a self-diagnostic engine of database uh, it has been enhanced so we introduced a ddm in 10g uh, but we enhanced and added this feature uh, in 12c i believe and you would be able to do the uh,
So compare period uh, ADDM is uh, important because you would be able to see the uh, analysis across two AWR snapshot periods and it helps and detect the cause, measure the effect and then provides the correlation. Uh, you would be able to see any workload changes or configuration changes as well as their effect uh, through the regress sequels or you can also take uh, actions based on uh, these compare period reports. So compare period reports uh, allows automatic comparison of two periods to determine what has changed and it also provides a valuable mechanism for quick performance troubleshooting. So real-time ADDM as I said uh, it makes a lightweight connection without acquiring any kind of additional logs and uh, resources. It bypasses the SQL layer through the agent. Uh, it also attempt to initiate a standard JDBC connection. So data is returned by either connection is analyzed by the ADDM. So this is particularly useful when you have a hung kind of situation within the database and you are not able to even reach out to uh, SQL plus session using uh, SSH clients. But since it has a diagnostic connection, it is directly from the memory pool. So that is bypassing it and uh, it would be able to provide you valuable guidance and you would be able to able to kill those particular sessions uh, in a hung situation so that uh, you need not to take the database uh, input. So the next session I'm going to cover in a different uh, video. The very next video is uh, I'm going to talk about database performance characteristic as well as sizing concepts. Uh, since now we have discussed about different tools which might be useful uh, for getting these uh, data points and they help uh, us uh, do the sizing uh, for any new migration or uh, especially moving to cloud infrastructure.